Cool. Thanks, Libby. Is the sound okay? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so for the past uh, 18 months, I've been teaching at uh, Inspiral Dev Academy. Uh, so we do a full stack uh, JavaScript boot camp. Uh, and I'm going to... But before I get before I get started, can I just get a show of hands? Who has some? Who's in the room and who has some association with Dev Academy? Like either a former staff, former student. Okay, so about like half the room. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so there, yeah, so there, there's quite a few people. If you want to ask questions, uh, you can also direct it to those people who just had their hands up. Um, I'm going to, oh yeah, there's also, all this also comes with a few caveats that, that I'm going to talk about some, some teaching concepts. A lot of these teaching concepts uh, have come from my colleagues or from, or from the students. Uh, the controversial ones uh, probably are my own though. Well, the, yeah. uh, there's also, the other, the other caveat is that if you're a former student of mine and, you, and I talk about how I teach and what, what's going on there and you think, yeah, it wasn't quite like that, Simon. Uh, just, just to caveat that, that, that some of the stuff is like the the stuff I would like I would like to emphasise later, uh, having had a bit of time to reflect on on the past eighteen months on and on teaching. So this is how I'm going to structure the talk. I'm going to talk about this this squishy concept, mutable identity. Uh, then I'm going to talk about um, talk about challenges of the boot camp, kind of situate situate a boot camp in, uh, in New Zealand, what it's trying to do, what are, some of the, what are some of the challenges and constraints that you have with a boot camp, and then I'm going to get into the meat and potatoes of uh, the specifics of teaching. Uh, if you're here, if you, if you thought yeah, mutable identity was something to do with immutability, the benefits of immutability and functional programming, you're in the wrong room, that's not what we're going to do. So this concept, mutable identity, this is a squishy, it's a social science concept, and I thought, well, how, you know, I'm going to present this at a, at a JavaScript uh, conference, so how am I going to do that? So I uh, wrote some pseudocode. Uh, this, so, the, so the concept of identity is that you have, uh, is that you have this, this, this self, this persistent and separate entity that you locate uh, somewhere in the head region, often. <laughs> And you you attach uh, descriptors to this to this self like uh, so I'm I'm from the Coromandel uh, I'm a I'm a developer I'm Parkia these kinds of descriptors these they often come with with norms of behaviour attached to these descriptors so I'm male therefore uh, I'm going to respond to to a particular situation in a particular way but not in these other ways which is sort of what um, Alex was talking about yesterday if you caught the the mental health uh, uh, panel as well. Uh, so there's there's this um, and there's this process where we've had a lot of experiences. We have we have a lot of past experiences, and we kind of generate them. We kind of uh, reduce them into um, into an identity. We we formulate an identity. And this is this is a this is a non-tech uh, person uh, describing our our make identity reducer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you take you take your past events and you you reduce it down to what who you are and what you're about. Now the the an issue with that is that uh, is that this often limits what what you think you can do. This is sort of a background process going on, and when you decide when you make decisions about what kind of careers you're going to pursue, what kind of opportunities you're going to take, um, these kind your identity may you may have self-limiting beliefs. And you may um, not d decide to pursue things like becoming a developer, for example, and this, uh, and that's because there's this there's a developer stereotype, um, and there's there's sort of this there's what I like to think of this this matching process between 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 what what we think of ourselves and we, whether we whether we can see ourselves in this role, and that's often to do with whether people like us are performing that performing that role. So I got into I got into programming uh, when I was 30, um, and I'm, th I'm 36 now. So even for me, when I got into programming, uh, this, was, this was somewhat of an issue, because uh, I thought I was too old. I thought you had to be super smart. I thought you had to be doing it since you were 12. Uh, so this was, this, this fuzzy equals may not have, 
may not have evaluated true all the time, only about maybe 80% of the time. So I often, I often think about that when I think of people taking the step into becoming a developer or signing up to boot camp. If they're, if they're coming from a different background um, than most developers, then, then this could be, you know, this, is, this can be a significant step and there's vulnerability in that step to become, uh, to adopt this role. And this is important because uh, being, being a developer is, it's, it's a challenging career, it's creative, uh, it's reasonably well paid, and so there's, if there's people who are, have these self-limiting beliefs getting into this and they don't decide to get into this career because of this somewhat arbitrary process, that's, that doesn't seem fair to me. So, oh yeah, Lodash, Lodash doesn't actually have a fuzzy equals <laughs> method, by the way. That's, they, didn't, they didn't accept my pull request. <laughs> uh, so what can we do about this? One thing we can do about this is we can go into develop a stereotype and we can critique it and deconstruct it. Uh, and that's a useful thing to do, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. Another thing that what I am going to talk about is this other thing we can do, which is we're going to refactor this code. Uh, we're going to get rid of the, we're going to jettison the developer stereotype, get rid of that dependent on those globals. That's, that's bad, it's a bad pattern. Instead, <laughs> instead, what we're going to do is we're going to give the person some new experiences, in particular, these new experiences are going to be the experience of learning an immense amount of stuff in a very short time. So we heard yesterday at the, at the mental health panel that if um, there is this culture of learning things, this expectation that you're supposed to learn things a lot or even all the time, and that is, um, that's certainly that's problematic. Uh, but there's something, about, there's something about having at least one or two experiences in your life where you've pushed yourself really hard and you've succeeded. Like a lot of the experienced developers in the room will know that if they were in a position where they had to learn a new language or they had to learn some advanced maths, their, their attitude would probably be, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I could do that. Because they have those experiences of, of, um, of learning a lot of things in a very short amount of time. It's probably not a good idea to get into that as as your life, as, as that's what you do. So that's the, that's the first kind of experience. The second kind of experience that a boot camp gives you is building working software with, um, with, another, with a group of people of a similar skill level. So, that's, so working as a team, I can, I can build an app, I can see this real app, I can share it with, uh, with my friends and family, it's relevant. Maybe it even solves a real problem in the world. Some of the apps that the students build do, do go on. Um, startups have been founded out of out of EDA. So that's, that's this concept of identity. The reason it's important is kind of for this as well, that, that it's going to give us some resilience, uh, and because this, this is what, a lot of what software development is. If we've got this identity, as a, as a competent developer, we can handle some of the stresses of this career. Uh, this, and for me, this is more I mean, it's really good to know concepts. It's really good to be familiar with a lot of web development concepts. It's really good to be familiar with the syntax of JavaScript, really good to know uh, the specifics of some, some well-used libraries. But really, my opinion is, is that if, if you've got this identity of, yeah, I could do that, then the rest, then learning those other things is, in, is really incidental. It's like, once you've got that identity locked in place, it's like, yeah, you could tackle that, you could do some AI, you could do some machine learning, et cetera, et cetera. I could learn that language, basically. And I think the experienced developers kind of have that, that feeling. So that's, that's, uh, that's this concept of identity. I'm gonna, we're gonna keep, throughout the rest of the talk, we're gonna circle back to uh, this concept of identity and, and evaluate different uh, parts of teaching and different parts of a boot camp in relation to that concept. So the second part I want to talk about is the challenges of a boot camp. The first, there's four of these challenges. The first challenge is, is that when, when people come to Dev Academy, they c often come from different starting points. So some people who arrive at EDA uh, have computer science degrees. Some people have been doing static website development for 10 years before they do a boot camp. Most students uh, haven't written any code uh, before they come to EDA or very little code. But you get cohorts, we take cohorts of about 8 to 18 people where there'll be a mix of these people together. So this is quite challenging. 
because uh, you have to keep everyone engaged. Uh, you have to, uh, people relating it back to our identity concept is that people inevitably do this thing where they compare themselves to other people. Uh, it's very hard to avoid that. And when there's people who have more experience, it's very hard to say, um, to, to stop doing that, even though it's not, we're gonna, we're gonna tell a story about ourselves as that's smart and I'm not, maybe I'm dumb, maybe it's my fault. Uh, so there's also people come from um, quite, so some people who, who arrive at boot camp are, are parents, and they have kids, kids get sick. Some, some, uh, some of them have been, they take nine weeks out of their life, so they, they, leave their ki they leave their kids for nine weeks to come to boot camp, they have to make a big commitment. Some people get uh, kicked out of their flat, some people have relationship breakdowns uh, during boot camp, so this is challenging stuff, this is quite a big commitment to do, and that's, that's gonna come up in boot camp. That's, that's definitely part of it. The second challenge, this is sort of, this helps answer the, the question of why JavaScript really. Uh, so the old, EDA's been running about three years, so the old curriculum was uh, Ruby and C Sharp plus JavaScript. Um, and this, and we've, we've transitioned to full stack JavaScript. The reason, part of the reason is, is that Node is, Node is getting more popular. Uh, part of the reason is that the JavaScript clients are getting fatter. Uh, but it's really, this, this isn't, there isn't a whole lot to say about this other than that we kind of have to teach web development through the medium of JavaScript rather than, rather than a specific language and tie people to a specific technology. We, ex we expect and we warn students that it's, that it's likely that they'll have to learn uh, another language outside of once they finish. So they have to understand the general concepts of web development. We, we do, but, but teaching just one language allows us to go uh, quite a bit deeper into that language, uh, into some more node-specific things as well. So that's challenge two. Challenge three. Uh, so this, this should look familiar. Um, so this is, this is how I'm gonna, this is how we're gonna divide up. This is almost a little, a little history of web development over the last couple of years. Uh, so phase zero, phase zero, we, the, the entire course is 18 weeks long. Uh, phase zero is the first half of that, that's, that's nine weeks. Uh, and that, in that phase, they learn uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. They can build a static website. So they do that offsite. They do that maybe, maybe putting in 20 hours a week, uh, working with a teacher remote and kind of linking up together if they're in the, in the same town. So that's, that's what we call phase zero. When they get to boot camp, we divide that up into three more phases, phases, each three weeks long. In the first phase, they learn something like this, so that we do, uh, we do handlebars as the view, we have connects.js as the, as the database interface layer, and this will be express here, so it's all very familiar. Uh, and that's, that, and this is pretty much, the, the, one of the difference with the old curriculum is this was pretty much the stack that was, that was taught in the old curriculum. So we do that entire architecture in three weeks, whereas in the old curriculum, they would just cover that, that architecture over, over the entire course. So that's, that's what happened now. And so if you're an experienced developer, start to put yourself back into the perspective of what it was like learning this stuff as a beginner, because this is what happens. So then we get into phase two, and this is what happens. We take the view and we stick it in a completely different environment. So as a beginner, this gets a little bit freaky because you just learned one thing and now it's completely different. Uh, but that's, we're transitioning into how people are gonna learn, um, how people build uh, more, modern, more modern apps. And so we use React on the front end as the, as the view. But of course, it's actually not that simple, is it? Because if you want a significantly sized React app, what are you gonna need? Maybe you're gonna need some client-side state management. Okay, great. So now we need some, now, now we need to separate these concerns. We're gonna break it all up. We're gonna have a reducer, stated actions, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna get some universal JavaScript going. And so there's, okay, it's not that easy. There's some more concepts to learn. But really, it's not even that easy because you're probably gonna need this stuff as well, unfortunately. So there's gonna be, maybe there's gonna be Webpack here and that's gonna be bundling your assets. Okay, your state's gonna be managed by your reducer, but if it's your URL state, it's gonna be managed by something else. That's kind of confusing. You're gonna be, be doing requires 
inside your inside your JavaScript, you're going to be requiring your CSS and your images. Weird, just weird. <laughs> oh, actually, if you want to connect your state to React, you're going to need this other library, React Router or React Redux, you know, etc. So this the ex the concepts start to explode once you get into this, as we're all as we're all familiar with. So it's, and it's much harder to teach because you're kind of taking things that people learnt and you go, actually, no, there's actually a different way now. Yeah, yeah. And this, is, this here is really still a vast simplification of what we teach because alongside this, there's, uh, there's Unix command line, there's Git, there's version control in a team, there's relational database management. There's interpreting vague customer requirements and putting them into use, workable user stories, those kinds of things. So there's all that, all the practices that support this, uh, that support uh, modern JavaScript uh, web development as well alongside that. So that's challenge three. Challenge four is this one. Uh, yeah, people harder than code. So, so there will, in my experience, I've seen quite a few cohorts have probably been involved in about 12, 13 cohorts. Uh, and I think I've only seen one cohort where there wasn't significant tensions between uh, some of the cohort members. So this will happen. It's very likely that there's going to be some tensions. Uh, our approach to this is not to suppress it, is that it's going to happen. Uh, we, but we, what we try to do is we give students the tools to handle those situations. So there's, alongside this, there's giving and receiving feedback. There's having a difficult conversation with somebody. There's a, kind of, there's a challenge that, hey, if you want to work in a high-functioning team, you're going to have to start orienting yourselves towards the needs of other people in your team. Those kinds of things. So alongside the, the technical curriculum, the, we also run what we call engineering empathy, which is what, what we slightly glibly call uh, becoming a better human. So it's, so it's empathizing with others, working as a team, those kinds of things. And for a lot of people, that's the real value. Like a lot of people come with the technical capacity to do the code, or they could have taught themselves the technical capacity themselves, because a lot of developers are self-taught. But this stuff, this kind of stuff isn't really, the industry doesn't really provide this. And but yet they find it quite valuable. Like that's but it's, it's much, often much better. Often employers are really looking for people who can work in a team rather than, rather than they know the specifics of an API or they're really, they're really advanced technically. That's challenge four. All right. So this, so they get what the, in the final, in the final phase we often get into uh, more advanced things. Uh, we, we can do some web sockets or we could do some universal JavaScript, those sorts of things. Week eight. They, the students do, um, they do their own research project and present it. Um, we offer, and we bring in guest speakers. Uh, and then in the final week, in week nine, on the, Thursday of, on the Thursday of week eight, everyone pitches, everyone pitches an idea for uh, the final phase. And uh, we select out of those pitches, we select uh, two or three projects for the cohort to build. And then over one week, they design and build and deploy um, a working app. And these are some of the apps that the students have built. Uh, Beat Boot Bot is, a, is an app for, for teaching kids how to program. It's got programming concepts built into it. Uh, Go Flat is for managing your flat. Inspiral Sim Academy is an app for simulating the Inspiral experience. Um, there's, there's been other apps. There's been a coffee app for bulk ordering your coffee order for your floor and then getting then getting prices back from the cafes and then sorting by distance and price and then doing a bulk order and then it will live update the barista's iPad app, which is they're supposed to have, yeah, in there. So there's quite advanced things. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about teaching. All right. So there's four things, there's four things I want to cover in teaching uh, as well. There's the first, the first concept I'm going to call the mysterious case of the disappearing teacher. So this is a reference to the role that the teacher will play, or more, more, more correctly, will not play as the, as the cohort progresses. And this is specifically referencing back to our identity concept. 
The second concept is uh, what came first, the ability or the concept. This is about uh, how abstract do you go and when. When and how abstract. If uh, do you... Yeah, it's the order in which you introduce things and how much emphasis you put on the abstract concept versus how much ab emphasis you put on doing the thing. The third concept is what I call any sufficiently abstract layer is indistinguishable from magic. This is a reference to abstraction layers. So it's like if, like, it's, a, it's the need to teach across the abstraction layers. So if you're, if you're just going to teach the high level nice sugary APIs or if you're just going to teach at the, at the low level concepts. The fourth concept is what I call stack them high and keep them coming. The Americans in the room will know this as a reference to pancakes. Uh, the, the EDA graduates in the room will know this as a reference to the rate at which we introduce new concepts. Mm. So I'm going to do these ones, too, these ones first, and this is how uh, I'm, I'm going to introduce these by showing you a typical day, typical teaching day at, at Dev Academy. Uh, so 9 a.m., we, we introduce a new concept. Uh, this will often be what we call a first pass. We don't go into a whole lot of detail about this. We'll then start to demo uh, the, the exercise or the challenge for that morning. Uh, the challenge itself will be... Um, will be of, often be of two types. There'll be, a, there'll be a toy example which demonstrates the concept. There'll be, then it will either be, there'll be a code base which you'll have to extend. Uh, it could be a CRUD app, maybe one of, the, one of the, the C's or the R's or the U's or the D's or the S's uh, are written and you have to extend and create the rest of it. Or there'll be a just user stories. You'll have to build the app from scratch. You have to meet those user stories. It's often good to switch back and forth between those two things. Sometimes they'll be pairing. Uh, sometimes they'll be working alone. It, it depends. Uh, then there's lunch. And then after lunch, well, often yoga as well in between these two things. After lunch, uh, I, like to do, I like to do mob program. I'm a huge fan of mob programming. The reason why is... That, and you can do this with a small cohort, is that you, what you do is you set, uh, you, you pull down a branch of what they've been working on in the morning, and then you set a timer, and so everybody, you set up a hot station, and we put the code up on the screen, and then we set the timer for five minutes, and everybody cycles through the hot seat um, for that five minutes, and we continue working on somebody's branch, continue to try to do that challenge. The reason I like this is that I'm not there at the front of the class delivering the content. What happens is that the students themselves are starting to play a more active role. So we think about identity formation, that's, that's where it's starting to happen. And so what, what you can do with that is you can, you can link, if there's, there's things will come up on the screen, you get some, sometimes you get teachable moments where, where you can explain a concept in, in context of where it's actually happening to, to the class. Or sometimes what happens, is that they will start to problem solve themselves. And so what I like to do when that happens is this sort of thing, just sort of sidle to the back of the class. All right, and I've been, I'm being, been given a warning. Uh, and and I try to remove myself from the picture. So that's, that's what I like to do because, of, because it's not really about you, it's about the students, it's about their identity development as the active participants in this. So I liked, this is how I like to flip it around. Students ask, rather than students, a model where students ask teacher questions, we should, be, we should be looking for this. We're drawing out knowledge from the students. Uh, so this, the next day we recap, and we, that's what we try to do there. We try, and I often hand the students the whiteboard, the whiteboard marker and say, this is, this is, tell us about this. Tell us what the architecture of the app you built, and you do it. Uh, so that's, that's that. So I'm, I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of doing ability before concept because people have the tacit knowledge of that, of that concept first and then you can build on that later. Uh, it, partly because of this reason, uh, this, in this diagram the student is the, uh, the teacher is the glasses emoji. They can be interacting with a student. These students can be, these students have got it, but meanwhile some other students haven't got it, they just haven't had the experience, they don't have the tacit knowledge yet. 
So, so I find the big learning from this is I question the value of, uh, of these kinds of lectures if, if there's students who haven't really got the grasp yet. Uh, I like to work across the, across the, the abstraction layers. Uh, this, and I think I have a hypothesis that this supports that if you just work at the top level of, of really nice, really, really sugary experiences, you're just going to get, um, you, that's going to build, that's going to lead to imposter syndrome. So because they haven't developed, they haven't gone lower level, that's, you, in the long term you get, well I can use this really nice API, but down below I don't really understand what's happening, so I like to work uh, much further down here. And then I can shift up or shift down if necessary. The last concept is that sort of how we, how we deliver. Uh, so in a, in a standard model, we might deliver like this. You might, you might have assumptions about of using building blocks. So if, we, if you might think, okay, we'll do, we'll do functions, and then once they have functions, we'll move on to the next concept. The trouble is it often takes quite a long time to get these concepts. So in this diagram, the concepts, are the, the, as they're getting filled in, is sort of how com comfortable people feel with this new concept. So it might take a while. Before they feel ready, before they feel ready for another thing, but the trouble with that is it's just too slow. So what we do in boot camp is we actually start stacking them on top of each other like this. <laughs> yeah. So even though you, we haven't you haven't quite got functions yet, we're going to shift on to something else. Next day objects. Next day assertions. Next day callbacks. What this does is it forces you to really focus on this. It also allows us to have richer examples that that will that they can learn. Because if, if we were just doing this, the examples that we could demonstrate concepts with would be pretty constrained to just toy examples. So we do that. Now across the whole, across the whole boot camp, this is what happens. So you think, think of their experience. You know, th this is all the concepts we have to cover. The trouble here is that this is where the student's focus will be. It'll be on the thing they learned just in the last couple of days. It won't be on this mountain of black blocks that they've got underneath them. It'll be right here. So the experience can often be like, can often be this. Oh, next slide. Is the experience is, is that you don't, you've got, this, you've got this inner critic telling you that you don't know this concept. But it just takes time. It just takes more practice, just takes time. So it's, we're often at the very edge of what people can do, how much people can absorb. And we have, so part of the program is that we switch this around. Uh, and we get people to, to say something more like this. So we get people to, to, to re-articulate, go and investigate that inner critic and give us a, tell it, get it to tell you something else. Uh, so this, this is, and what happens, what happens when we get to the final end of that, that stack? So we, we ease off on the concepts in the last uh, couple of weeks. What happens is, what happens is that um, is that things they start to catch up, and so that because we don't really introduce many new concepts in the last week or two, they'll they'll catch up. They'll do a bit of practice themselves. They'll get into their final group projects, and they'll um, and that's that's when things all consolidate. So we have this. What uh, the story I like to tell is that in that final that final week, what happens? is I'll be in the kitchen, the students will be working on, it uh, eases off in the last week, you don't have to do that much. <laughs> yeah, and, and the group, and so they'll be, they'll be in the kitchen, they'll be right in the middle of their group projects, and they'll, what, and they'll, start, to, they'll start to be having these quite intense technical conversations. They'll, they'll, say, they'll say, oh, if we, if we shifted that logic back to the database level, you know, we could avoid these Ajax call from the front end, or they'll say, Oh, I haven't reset. I need to reset the environment variables, and I'll be there like, uh huh, yeah. Okay, and that's that's what it is. That's what it's about. And they realise that they are now a competent developer. They can have these conversations they couldn't have before. So that's and that's when I know my work here is done. <laughs> yeah.